Hello again everyone, welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy Brave XVS. My name is Mars, today we're going to be talking about Emperor Fu, and we're going to uncover the secrets of why he's actually, potentially, for you, a lot stronger than most people think he is. Uh, because at face value, he is a really very strong unit, um, but a few things look underwhelming to people, but when you do a little bit of math to uncover what it all means together in one cohesive kit, you have yourself a very capable support unit. So today's video is going to be a little bit less graphic heavy because it's a, it's simpler to just dive into his kit, which for me saves a little bit of time and a little bit of headache, so I appreciate that. The first thing I want to look at is his Trustmaster reward. It is one of those items that kind of gives a bunch of different stat options based on what you have equipped. So if you equip a robe, a sword, a staff, a helmet, and light armor, each of them can respectively give you 20% MP, attack, magic and spirit, defense, and HP. Um, now of course you can't necessarily equip all these things at once if you are double handing a weapon, because he does have true double hand spirit and magic. Um, but you can at least keep these in mind because you do want his trust passive activated um, So you will have this or his super trust master equipped So this item is really handy on him as well because it gives him some of the stats that can help help him out Such as the MP and the magic and spirit and the defense and the HP uh, So those are all worth picking up and it does also give some flat magic and spirit attack and defense Granted attack is not a relevant stat for him, but uh it's there <laughs> in case you need it now looking at a super trust master reward I have to confess it's really not the most amazing super trust master reward um, it has two primary things that it does in addition to just being a good staff all around 140 spirit 120 magic um, the Imperial Legacy passive increases the summon damage from all of the espers in the game which is really handy if you want to summon espers for damage and it also boosts magic and spirit by 30% and the esper evocation parameters by 30% so this is basically the summoners favorite weapon of all weapons um, but ain't a lot of people using <laughs> summoners for damage. Um, Bahamut could be, you know, an exception with his new two-star form coming out, but even then, from what I understand, his damage is not all that impressive. So for that reason, I'm not particularly interested in this passive. The other thing that this staff does is it fills the Esper Gauge by 5 at the beginning of battle. So um, the thing that you'll notice with Emperor Fu is that a lot of his abilities require Esper Orbs in order to activate them. So having the ability to fill the Esper Orb Gauge a little bit at the start of battle is really handy. But again, not necessarily something I'm super stoked about or something that I would find myself uh, you know, pulling especially hard to get. So if you miss it, it's not a big deal. While we're in this window, let's take a look at his Limit Burst. This is one of the most expensive Limit Bursts in the game at 60 Limit Crystals to fill, so it is not very easy to get. If, if you in plan to include this as part of your typical rotation, I would recommend that you have an Entruster in your party. There are a handful of people who can do it very, very well, such as uh, Warrior of Don Galoof or Mira. Um, you can use either of them to use in trust to help him keep his limit burst up with full uptime because 60 LB cost is is very very high but it is a very strong limit burst because it fills the evocation gauge by 10 which fills it completely it also boosts all stats by 200% for five turns so it does last for a very long time and it restores MP for all allies so really a very nice limit burst um, if you're using them in the full buffer breaker support role it is something that you will likely use um, at least in at one point during the battle so it may be worth leveling if you do plan on using it for the stat buffs because that's that's what scales with the levels now taking a look at Emperor Fu's kit um, he has a number of abilities like he has he has a ton out here um, that are split between two different multi casts Wait, before I want to get to that, I want to do his LB. I mean, y'all got to see it. If you don't have him, if you don't use it much, you got to see how cool it is. Yeah, that's a cool LB. I like it. Anyways, um, he has two different sets of abilities locked behind two different multicasts. The first one is Imperial Orders, which corresponds with Imperial Mandates. And both of these cooldowns enable him to... Uh, double or triple cast in the case of mandates um, Certain particular abilities so any of the ones that are labeled as strategy abilities He is able to multicast and then his other multicast is Imperial summons which allows him to Double cast any of his summon abilities and he has a few of those that he can choose from 
We're gonna look first at his Imperial Orders because these are gonna be kind of your bread and butter abilities. And if you have his Trust Master equipped, you can triple cast these at all times. And the thing that bugs me about them is that they all have the same icon, so you have to pause and read them a little bit. But these top four right, oh gosh, it's so hard for me to gesture on here. <laughs> The top four here, strategy, square formation, wedge formation, hook formation, and circle formation are his stat buffs combined with stat breaks abilities. And these are good. Um, they do give you, if you use Imperial Edicts, which is a cooldown, it does give enhanced versions of them, but you're not actually gonna use them a whole lot. They, they're they handy if you wanna do some stronger turn one breaks, um, but less handy throughout the rest of the fight. So these top four are your single stat breaks and stat buffs. Uh, the four abilities that I use the most are the bottom four. The first one, or the first two go together. It's strategy snake formation and arrow formation. And these two abilities complement each other because combined, they provide a 150% full stat buff for three turns to all allies, and they mitigate physical and magical damage by 30% to all allies, and they provide 100% break immunity for all stats to all allies. So most of the time when I'm jumping into a fight, I'm using each of these abilities um, because combined they have a very powerful effect. The break immunity, the buffs, and the physical and magic mitigation. Um, the third ability in this list is strategy five fold formation, and this is an AOE 65% full stat break. And 65% may not sound like a lot, but we'll we'll talk later about why it's actually more than sufficient in the case of, of Emperor Fu. So it's very common for me when I'm when I'm using Emperor Fu, I'm using him as my breaker and as a buffer. So I use these three abilities in combination. That's so cool. <laughs> those animations are awesome. So what we just did with that one turn is we gave ourselves all those buffs, all that mitigation, and we um, and we broke all enemies by 65%. Um, so that's that. And then the last one of his strategy abilities is Warcry, which increases all allies' damage against beasts and humans. So if you're fighting a beast or a human target, it's super handy to use that. Now looking at his base summoning abilities, um, most of them are just okay in my opinion. Uh, there's a there's a few different ones that you could use um, kind of on demand or, or when you need them, but but honestly uh, the the not unlocked or the or the the summon abilities that he can use at any time are not really that impressive. Um, so the first two that I care the least about are, are the Chilean Rage and the Chilean Fury. Um, those are just damage abilities that don't do very much damage and they consume the Esper Gauge. So those ones you can easily not pay attention to unless you really needed an Avalanche Kick or Chaos Wave Awakened Double Caster, but you probably won't ever use that. The other two are a little bit better with Chilean Blessing. Uh, this one restores 222 MP to all allies, which is quite a lot of flat MP. It also removes all breaks and all status ailments. So this is really handy if you need to recover from some status ailment nonsense. Uh, that one's actually pretty handy. The only unfortunate thing, of course, is that you can't multicast it with the rest of his other strategy formation things. Chilean Aura is also not too bad. It consumes the evocation gauge to... Um... Am I looking at the wrong one? I am looking at the wrong one. I was like, what the heck? Am I having deja vu? I literally just read that. Yeah, so uh, Chilean Aura <laughs> it popped with the same description. I didn't move it. I'm so dumb and perhaps a little tired. Um, Chilean Aura consumes the evocation gauge to fill the LB gauge for all allies except for self, and it fills it by 10 crystals. So it's a good amount, but not a crazy amount. It costs six uh, Esper orbs, so you can only cast it once per turn. But the other th great thing that it does is it boosts LB fill rate for three turns to all allies. So those are not bad there. Um, let's move on to his cooldown skills because they do unlock some additional abilities and um, at least one of them does. And there's more that we can talk about there. 
Uh, the first one is Imperial Edict. This unlocks your stronger break buff combos for this turn and the following turn. So if I wanted to use Imperial Edict, I could then go to uh, like Square Formation and Wedge Formation, and that would create 70% attack and magic breaks for all enemies with 180% uh, defense and spirit buffs for the party because it, they, they were enhanced by Imperial Edict. But um, I don't I don't do that a lot. I mostly just pop the 65% full break because the the difference is only 5% and as you'll see It doesn't really matter that much the other two strategy cooldowns uh, provide Element resists of 80% to all elements if you combined both of them and they provide some HP and MP Restoration on each of them respectively uh, The only drawback of these is that they don't have permanent uptime But they are a high buff amount that you can use in a pinch when you need them um but the more important thing is that Final Edict does uh, unlock some additional chilling abilities. And those animations look so dope. Like, kudos to the Brave XP team for making those. I love them. So as you can see, we have some new summon abilities that have been enabled thanks to um, Final Edict. These abilities are definitely a little bit better than the other ones. So, and they can be multicast with the Imperial Summons multicast. So the first one is Call for Wind. Uh, this one fills the Evocation Gauge by four orbs. And uh, so that's good if you need a little bit of Esper Gauge fill going on there. Uh, Chilean Execution does Esper Gate, or it does Esper Summon damage. Um, and it consumes all 10 of the Esper Orbs. So even if you try to multicast it, you will not be able to because it consumes all 10 at once. And we can go ahead and look at what that looks like. Cause I sure as hell am probably never going to use that in battle. Um, it can do decent damage with a with the right evoker build, but I'm not really interested in doing that. The unlockable chilling ability that is actually really good is chilling protection. Um, this uses the entire summon gauge to put three stacks of mirage on the party that last for three turns. So it looks like this. And it is awesome. Um, I found it to be super helpful against uh, Scorn of the Bomb family because they do a lot of random physical attacks. And you don't need the whole party to have three stacks all the time, but having three stacks on the whole party makes it so much easier for, for some of your DPS and other people to survive more easily. So if there's any summoning ability for you to be excited about, it would be Chilean Protection and then the uh, the one that restores MP and removes breaks and, and ailments. Those are Those are your better summoning abilities. Now, Emperor Fu also has a Magnus ability, which I actually haven't used yet. Oh, I need to have another party member to use it. What the crap? Oh, we're gonna go do that right now. We're gonna we're gonna get someone to help us with this. I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I know that you have to have another party member now that you know I'm I'm thinking about it. Um, but yeah, it's it's very very strong for a Magnus ability because it fills the entire limit gauge for every member of the party. Uh, regardless of how big it is uh, because currently there's nobody with a higher limit burst gauge than a hundred crystals required to fill it uh, Prince Noctis has that amount for his limit burst, but even Emperor Fu is able to fill that so you would It's really amazing for turn one shenanigans. It's really amazing um, For mid fight recoveries and things like that having this in your back pocket can be super helpful oh, I guess Foka has to use her you have to have somebody with an empty LB to be able to use it Let's go ahead and make that happen Celestial Destiny. So this fills full limit bars to the entire party. What a cool ability. Yeah, I like that one. Um, so that's really, really good. Of course, it's a Magnus ability, so you can use it only once per battle. But uh, when you use it, I mean, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be in really, really good shape. Now, as far as um, how to use him in battle, the most important thing that I can recommend for people who plan on using Emperor Fu is to combine him with a general mitigator. Uh, Emperor Fu's greatest weakness is that his Imperial Edict is his only source of general mitigation, uh, which makes that like his only weakness, and it only lasts for a few turns, so you don't have full uptime on it. General mitigation is one of your most important sources of damage reduction. Um, so you want to make sure that you have that and, and in today's day and age we have a lot of people who can provide that uh, We have people like Charlotte who is very commonly used. We have uh, people like Ignis who is very popular right now um, Gladi- or Gladiolus, gosh, I wish um, Seagard is who I was thinking of. I was picturing my other man Gladiolus um, Seagard can do it. Galoof can do it 
anybody who can provide you 40 or 45 or 50 percent general mitigation is somebody who combines super super well with emperor fu and if you have one of those mitigators in your party then you are able to use emperor fu as your only breaker and I'm going to show a little slide right here. This kind of shows a comparison in break damage um, from, and we, in, when, when this mouse was calculated, we used Igion's arm laser as like the, the attack that we were trying to mitigate, right? So it's a magical attack and it hurts quite a lot. And so we wanted to compare what is it like if you use Emperor Fu's breaks and his mitigation with 50% mitigation versus using stronger breaks, but no magic mitigation, right? So that's what these three different numbers compare. Um, so the first line um, shows the damage calculation of Igion's arm laser in the the, the scorn of Igion um, after he has been broken by 84% and he's hitting targets that have 50% mitigation. And all of these have 50% general mitigation in the calculations. I've highlighted each of the numbers so you can kind of identify where the different numbers are coming from in this formula. The two blue numbers are magic stats. The one on the left is the breakable magic stat, and the one on the right is the unbreakable magic stat, meaning that when you break the boss, the one on the right is unaffected. It is added as a raw amount of damage to the total broken magic from the left. So what these raw stats or these unbreakable stats mean is that your breaks are going to be less potent at higher levels. Um, lower level breaks are going to be sufficiently potent in many cases, depending on what your additional supporting buffs and mitigators are. So as you can see for the first line with an 84% break um, against a target with only one spirit, and they have 50% general mitigation, you're at about 650,000 damage. And again, this is, this is the damage that you're taking if you have only one spirit. Of course, you're gonna take way less than that because nobody has one spirit in the game. The second row shows a much more common break amount, as you can see in, in that middle yellow number, it says 0.26, which is how you calculate a 74% break, which I think is what most people tend to run. Uh, units like Kryla are super popular, she has 74, 75% breaks, Auron, Lauron, uh, Lauron, Lauren, Lid, and, and a lot of other breakers have, or I guess Lid has better, she has like 79, but anyways, 74% breaks are super, super common. Um, and as you can see, if you run the exact same calculation, you just bring the break down by 10%, you're looking at 832,000 damage against a one spirit target. So you're looking at a pretty noticeable increase in damage taken, but not, you know, not impossible to manage. And this is what most people are running. This middle number is what most people have. Most people have 74-ish percent breaks and almost everybody's running 40 to 50 percent general mitigation. But only some people, and not everybody, are running the different typed mitigation that stacks with general mitigation, right? So the, the mitigation that Emperor Fu provides is physical and magical, meaning it stacks with general mitigation. But of course he has lower breaks, so we have to count for that. So what does it look like if you're trying to tank Igion's arm laser and you're only using his 65% breaks, and you're still using the 50% general mitigation because it has to come from someone else. But what happens when you layer in the extra 30% magic mitigation that comes from Emperor Fu's kit? If you start at the left side, you look at, it's it's the same calculation, only the 0.35 on the break number represents a 65% break. So obviously that's gonna make the magic stat that you are trying to survive against much higher uh, than if you had you know a 74 or an 84% break. Um, but we have two green numbers this time towards the end of the equation. The first 0 0.5 represents your general mitigation. And then because this is a magical attack, you get to apply your magical mitigation, which is 0 0.3. Okay, that, that represents um, how much mitigation is taking place for this damage. And as you can see, this damage output is 710,000 damage, which is, you know, against a one spirit target, all right? So you're never gonna see this amount of damage, but it's for easy comparison purposes, easy math. Uh, you can draw correlations or, or percentages from this. But as you can see, um, the amount of damage that you're taking with this is less than if you were using a 74% breaker and not using magic mitigation. But it is still not as effective as using an 84 four percent break with just general mitigation so i don't know if this comparison is super clear to everybody top row 84 percent breaks middle row 74 percent breaks bottom row is 65 percent breaks but with 
Emperor Fu's 30% magic mitigation added, okay? So you can see that this makes, uh, the 65% breaks with this magic mitigation makes it more effective than 74% breaks. However, I will add as a caveat, some people are already using type to mitigation, okay? The physical and the magical mitigation with general mitigation. If you're already doing that, then Emperor Fu probably will not provide super noticeable uh, survivability increases for your party. It may not be as pronounced. For somebody like me who I've basically just run 84% breakers or or 79% breakers with 50% mitigation and nothing else. I don't typically use typed mitigation. I haven't used Charlotte in a while. I, I, I don't use Sylvie very often. Um, and they provide, you know, those types of mitigation. I, I have been taking you know, kind of, kind of the, the raw end of the damage because I don't use that typed mitigation. Um, but if, and it would be inconvenient or difficult to add typed mitigation because I don't want to slot Sylvie just for typed mitigation. I don't want to slot Charlotte because I would rather use White Knight Noel because he is a stronger tank and he provides more of what my party needs. Um, Emperor Fu is able to provide that typed mitigation easily and on demand, making him one of the most dispel immune support characters in the entire game because he can provide the entire buff array in just a single turn um, and the breaks at the same time. So the slot compression is really impressive on top of being able to provide more than sufficient survivability. And this is what you saw when I was fighting uh, the Scorn of Aegion in my previous video. I was using uh, Xuan Wu and Qing Long with Emperor Fu with the rest of my party. And uh, we survived just fine. I mean, there were there were a couple of bad RNG turns or things like that where I think things went south because I wasn't provoking, and that's you know that's on me. <laughs> that's not the smartest way to play it. But uh, I mean, it went relatively smoothly. It wasn't the fastest run or anything, but it did absolutely work. And and that's because this combination of 65% breaks with general mitigation with typed mitigation can actually produce better survivability results than if you're only doing stronger breaks with general mitigation only. So it's something to consider based on your party and your playstyle. For me, this build enables me to do different sort of parties uh, that don't force me to take a dedicated breaker who has all these dead turns. Um, and that's ultimately why I'm really fascinated with Emperor Wu, uh, Fu, because Almost every other breaker in the game has dreadfully useless dead turns, okay? Whether it's Edgar, whether it's Kryla, whether it's Locke, most of them don't have the most amazing or useful off turns for when they're not breaking, but Emperor Fu absolutely has the best off turns. So if you're able to stay within like the zone of survivability that you need by using, you know, these 65% breaks and these 30% typed mitigations, then you don't need, <laughs> you know, to waste slots on dead turns. You can consolidate all of that into a single role and then free up other party slots to do other things. Now, I do plan on showcasing some of these strategies that I have um, in upcoming streams as well as potentially another upcoming video for you guys to see. Um, so that it's not just me explaining the theory behind why he's good, but it's actually putting it into practice. Because I put it into practice once, but I want to show again what it can really do for your team. There is one important thing to note about the typed mitigation and when it would not come in handy to use somebody like Emperor Fu as your solo breaker and buffer slash typed mitigator. And that is when you're up against a fight that has a very, very high amount of fixed damage. Because fixed damage bypasses the different types of typed mitigation. So if you have physical mitigation or magical mitigation, it is usually completely bypassed by fixed damage. Um, the most notable uh, example of this is the Emperor series boss battle. That guy is a cranky old piece of garbage who does a ton of random targeted fixed damage magic attacks um, that completely bypass magical mitigation and they really really hurt and so the best way to help make sure that he doesn't kill you is of course use general mitigation which is never bypassed and also to just use stronger breaks so that's one of those rare instances where i would say you know what maybe emperor fu is not the best but i found that with most fights fixed damage is not as lethal. Uh, Emperor is definitely the most extreme case. A lot of modern fights do have at least one fixed attack that they'll throw out as part of their rotation, but rarely is it so severe that you can't just use the 65% breaks, rely on the 200% buffs that come in Emperor Fu's limit burst, and uh, kind of just tank it out through general mitigation and some of those other things. So 
it's worth keeping in mind. If you're going to, into a fight like Emperor Serious Boss Battle that has a crap load of fixed attacks, Emperor Fu may not be the best, but if you're going into a more standard trial that has a, a medley of, you know, coverable, mitigatable, uh, resistible, different types of damage, that's when Emperor Fu really, really shines, and that's where I'm most excited to continue using him. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show off a couple of, uh, I'm gonna show off a sample build or two here. I'm not gonna get into the details too much because all that really matters with Emperor Fu is that you are building for uh, true double hand magic and spirit. In my opinion, I'm just building mine as a support. I don't care about getting magic. Mine is strictly built for true double hand spirit more than anything else, as well as using the Summer Parasol from uh, Summer Silka. Uh, that combo unit because the Summer Parasol automatically refills the Esper Gauge by one every turn. Um, so if you equip, a, I think it's by one, right? Is it by one or is it by one or two? I don't, I don't remember. Anyways, you throw a couple of these on other party members as well, and you can keep the Esper Gauge more full for Emperor Fru to use more of his Esper abilities. But other than that, I equip to match his passives and try to give him true double hand spirit because you can build him pretty easily to over 2000 spirit, which will make any of his HP or MP refreshes stronger. And it makes him much harder to kill in battle, which of course is what you want most out of a support unit. So i um, not gonna harp too much on the builds because it's, he's a support unit, so you build based on what you got. Go true double hand spirit, which means get some flat spirit in there, get a high spirit staff. Um, match whatever his passives are from his TMR, and then that's about it. I mean, support support unit building is super easy, so I really like that. And I think that just about covers that. I hope that was super clear. I know that I used a lot of numbers to talk today about like why Emperor Fu is so good. Um, hopefully you saw an example of it with Scorn of Aigayan with Fu as my only breaker and as my mixed mitigator. Um, please let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments below, and I'll see everybody in the next video. Mm -hmm.